ladies and gentlemen, from Arena Birmingham, we are set to go with our co-featured bout of the evening. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn's Matchroom Boxing, sponsored by William Hill, StubHub, and JD Sports. Your timekeeper for this bout is Brian Heath, and at the sound of the belt, the third man in the ring from Newark is Kevin Parker. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing scheduled in the super welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he wears the brown with gold trim. He weighed in at 11 stone, one pound. His professional record, 11 victories against two defeats. He has seven wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. He is the former WBA Pan-African Super Welterweight Champion. Please welcome Hassan Champez, one time, Joaquinho. Joaquinho. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the black with the silver stripe. He scaled at a ready 10 stone, 13 pounds. His professional record, 23 victories against four defeats. He has 15 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is the former WBC International Welterweight Champion and the former West Midlands, Commonwealth, British, and European Welterweight Champion and is the reigning IBO Continental Super Welterweight Champion fighting out of Birmingham, England. Introducing the savage, Sam Eggington. Eggington. Both know the rules and expect a clean contest. Watch your heads, don't want any low blows. I'm going to obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Ten rounds, touch gloves, touch gloves, touch gloves. Back. Real support here for one of the current circuit's real attractions. Starbridge is exciting, no nonsense. Down to earth, Sam Eggington. He's already surpassed so many to become a British Commonwealth and European oh, champion. Oh, oh, oh. He's had four defeats, he's not perfect. But he's still just 24. Can you believe it? What a ride we've had with Eggington already no. as he tackles here Hassan Marakinho from Tanzania. Well, we've seen Eggington that much, and it just feels a lot older because his career's been so dramatic. But he's come on leaps and bounds, and now we believe that he's solid enough and good enough to step up to that sort of European level and maybe beyond. But we'll wait, eagerly wait to see that. But um, he's got to get this job done tonight because. The future could be very bright for him. 28th fight for Eggington, the 14th for Moaquinho from the east coast of Africa. From Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. 11 victories in his 13 appearances. Two defeats. We don't quite know what to make of him. He's fit, but he's taken this at short notice. He's come with a small entourage. And he's young, at 23, so fresh. Yeah, he's obviously confident, quite brave, because he would have had a good look at Sam Eggington, who looks physically more imposing, looked bigger and stronger in there. And if he feels stronger when he's backing up, Joaquinho, he will just let his big shots go, body and head. We've seen Sam Eggington, he's, he likes a finish, he likes to um, dazzle the fans. Just backing... Moaquinho up here, probably looking for big shots very early on. The styles he tends to have issues with, Eggington. Now the movers, Bradley Skeet, Mohamed Mimoun for that European welterweight title, which he lost, surprisingly, really, in Manchester. But a couple of uh, recent victories. Up in the super welterweight division now, and I think it was a real struggle for him to get down to 10-7. He looks big at 10-13 now, doesn't he? He does, yeah. He's doing the right thing here this evening, you know, building himself up at super, super welterweight, trying to put himself in the mix for a big fight. So he doesn't want to be slipping up here or even look like he's struggling here tonight. I mean, I think after speaking to his cornermen, then 
they're expecting quite a conclusive victory, but you can never be too sure. Yep, sometimes you're never quite sure. When you see the name Hassin Moaquinho and you look at the record and you can't read too much into it. He has travelled before. Botswana and Russia he's appeared in first time to the UK. A little bit of a mystery man, but just catches Egerton there. And Egerton felt it. And there's occasionally some vulnerability about the Savage. And the Tanzania found it here and he's backed up Egerton right at the end of the first. What about that? Welcome back, John Pegg, as always, with Sam Eggington. How about this? Body shot and one to the head for good measure from Marquinho, the major underdog here at the end of the first. Well, now we know a little bit more about him. Well, we certainly do. I mean, that, that left hook looked look like it shook Sam Eggington to his boots, and then he does that careless, nonchalant thing where he drops his guard as if matter of fact that didn't hurt me. And he gets hit with three or four more silly shots, and Marquinhos really fancies this now. And quite fast hands are looking quite skillful. Yeah, big right hands, and Eggington caught in somewhat of a daze under these lights in front of his home fans. And Marquinhos really going for broke here, beginning of the second. And Eggington's going to have to cover up or fight back or do something because at the moment he looks slow and ponderous and he's going to be taken out here, Sam Eggington. This would be a terrible onset if Sam Eggington doesn't get his guard up and switch on because he's getting hit far too frequently, looking badly hurt here. Eggington hoping for a big fight soon and he's coming apart here and the fight is over. It's been stopped, a huge upset here in Birmingham in front of his fans at the arena as Hassan Mwakinho arrives on the scene all the way from East Africa with a week's notice and unheard of and unheralded and he takes Sam Eggington, the former British Commonwealth and European champion, apart. Congratulations to Mwakinho, what a victory and what a silence there in Brooke. the blue corner. I need to go, Brooke. Well, that just shows that you can't take anything for granted in this game. Boxing can be cruel at times, but Sam Eggington just not switched on, getting hit far too often, far too easily, and dropping his guard and just soaking shots on his chair. I mean, the referee gave him every possible chance to do something about it, but he was dazed. And Joaquinho really shocking everybody. I was told earlier he's a very tough African. He's coming to win. And he certainly did come to win. I want Kel Brook. He's screaming down at you. Well, he's at ringside, at Kel. I'm quite perturbed. I don't quite know what to do. But he's, He he's... doesn't want you. He wants Kel Brook. And I'll tell you what. What a performance. A long, long way from home. At short notice against a fighter. Let's be honest. Who was using this as a tune-up for... A major one in a matter of weeks, probably Eggington. Well, he looked sharp and confident from the off, and that, that round one finish that he had against Sam Eggington when he had him on the ropes, he then sat down in his corner and he must have thought to himself, I can do this, and he came out round two full of energy, bouncing his step, and look at him, he's quite skillful and sharp and he's got decent power, so, you know, full respect to Moakini, but Sam Egerton really needs to go back to the drawing board now and have a think about what happened there, speak to his corner man and um, see how serious he wants to take this because he had a massive opportunity in front of him that's been totally torn away from him this evening. I'm just flabbergasted at him. His victories have been against very average, limited opposition, Moakini. He did lose to Lendrish Akopian, unbeaten in Russia, but the away fighter 
This time, he went into the ring, he fancied it, he caught him with a left hook to the body and to the head at the end of the first, and he jumped all over Sam Eggington, who just didn't look switched on at all. No, and you can't be switched off, especially early on in this sport, because there's punches coming at you thick and fast. And um, he's a victim, you know, it's his own fault. Joaquin, you really excited, happy, I mean, as he would be. Well, fascinating stuff. Yeah, well done, Hassin Joaquin. Listen out for this name now. Apologies for the loss of sound. And Hassin Joaquin. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Kevin Parker calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, one minute and two seconds of round number two. Your winner by RSC Hassan. Champes one time Joaquin. Congratulations to the Tanzanian camp. But what next for Sam Eggington? That's a terrible defeat in front of his home crowd. Yeah, a huge upset here in Birmingham. Congratulations to Hassan Mwakinyo. First fight in the UK, Johnny. Wow. Not a bad performance. What do we know about him? 20, that's 24 fights now, uh, 14 wins. Uh, 23 years old. 23 years old, 14 wins. Uh, 14 fights, 12 wins, and now eight knockouts. We knew nothing about him. We walked in here, I think we've got a week's notice of that. Um, and so he's one of those opponents that you just, you overlook. We all overlooked him. Um, and, and Sam Aginson got to a stage where he was in the fight and he was getting hit clean. He didn't want to change it. Ego said, I'm just walking you down, I can take your shots. But eventually, you can only take so many of those shots. And, uh, and, and, and he paid the price. Where did it go wrong for Sam tonight? He just didn't seem to get his hands up. I think it was a stereotypical case of looking beyond this fight. Yeah. You know, he was told he was, he was fighting on the, the big AJ card if he came through tonight. And, and that's it's such a banana skin that is, you know, it, because subconsciously you can't help but look past it. You're fighting someone. You've got to have total fo uh, attention on this opponent. He was a dangerous opponent. We didn't know how dangerous. We, we all believed that Sam would come through it. But, you know, that's the thing. That's when it happened. When you're looking past someone, that's when all this happens. Just how much confidence will Mourinho take from that? Coming to the UK for the first time and then you're going to win like that? I wonder if the result would be different if they, they now have a rematch and that's a, a, a massive wake-up for, call for, for Sam Eggington uh, to not make such a mistake. Uh, for Mourinho, he's done everything he's expecting of him. Now he's shouting, I heard him shouting in the ring, I want Kel Brook. You never know, he might be shouting, I want Amir Khan out at all, but he's there and he wants to get in the mix. No, I think we need to see the rematch. I yeah. think that Sam Jenkinson was looking past this fight. He yeah. didn't give him the respect he should have. I'm sure he trained the same and he thought he was as focused. It's subconscious, it creeps in without even realising it, but I think we well, need to see well, a rematch. you could see how he was fighting when he was getting hit. Yeah. Most of us would change tact, but he's just walking, taking the shots, hands down. This isn't happening. Just, this yeah. isn't happening. Exactly, denial. And, and, and the referee eventually said, look, I've got to jump in. You're getting hurt. And even when he went back to his corner, he was still dazed to say, why did he stop this? But I think when he sees the re replay, then he realised why. But for Sam Eggington, he needs to pick himself up now. Learn he, from that. Yes, he does. And uh, and, and it, it could could be confident, shattering, career shattering. But as Matthew said, get the rematch. Fight for the rematch. Get that rematch. And then he has to, wrong, he has to right this wrong. Yeah, totally agree. I mean, I mean, you, I was actually thinking, you know, that throw the towel in. I was, I was actually thinking trying to tell him, you know, he was taking a lot of stick, he was getting taking a lot of heavy shots, but, you know, it, you know, he needs the rematch.